All right. We are live. Welcome back to another midday edition of Elevate Your Grind brought to you by the Cannabis Lab. I am your host, Todd Rosales, and it is great to see you all again. This is the second daytime episode of Elevate Your Grind that we've done this week. I actually like them. I get my afternoons and evenings back. I get to see my family again. We might make this a regular occasion. Folks, I hope you've been enjoying our content. We've had a, I thought we had a great conversation with Kendra Stocking earlier this week, learning how to deal with speaking to children and, and just dealing with cannabis within the family environment and, you know, best practices around that and really just finding out other people's opinions. Um, I think that's something that's going to be a huge conversation going forward. It's going to be a big part of parenting as this permeates more through our society and culture and becomes more normal. So, you know, if you're a parent, if you're an expecting parent, even if you're just someone who's curious, I highly recommend you go into our YouTube page, youtube.com slash elevate your grind and checking out the episode with Kendra when it comes out next week, because I just realized it's still Friday. It's not Monday yet. So uh, other than that, folks, we've got some great C-Lab content coming up for you next month in May. I believe we're going to have two different panels and one in-person event. You can go to joincelab.com for more information on that. And of course, we'll be live again with two more Elevate Your Grinds next week at facebook.com slash business group. All right, folks, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So I think this might be the first time that we've spoken to anybody that operates outside of the United States. Realistically, the contiguous United States, because I don't know if we've spoken to anybody in Alaska or Hawaii yet. But, you know, it, I think it's really good to start looking at the overall global market of cannabis. And of course, that includes CBD and hemp and so many different things. Right. Um, I will be honest for myself. I have a hard enough time becoming a quote unquote experts. I'm certainly not of the U S cannabis market. So I have not really started looking outside of our own borders, but I think the rest of the world, it's good to keep an eye on good to see what's going on because there are so many different ways that this can be done and regulated. And there's so many different opportunities for someone to get it right or do it properly or for people to benefit. I think it's actually good to start understanding the markets around the world. So luckily within my network, we've got a few friends that can reach out to certain people. So please welcome my guests today, James and Neil from Mello over in the UK. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, Todd. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the invite. Pleasure to be on the show. Um, hello to anyone and everyone in the US that's listening. Um, and yeah, sort of pleasure, pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Thank you. And James, thank you for coming as well. I appreciate both you guys taking the time out of your day, especially because me, it's still just lunchtime on a Friday for you guys. You're, you're ready to hit the pub and get a couple pints, I imagine. I mean, we've already been in the pub, Todd, to be honest. We did this coming back from the to talk to you. So this is just like a, a post, post party warm down. So exciting. If only, if only that were true. If only that were true. <laughs> we should have just did this live from the pub. It would have been a whole much more exactly. fun. Now, now, now that that would be a good show, Todd. That would be a good show. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> so, so guys, help us understand. You know, the climate for CBD and cannabis over in the UK right now, or even just Europe in general, right? I think a lot of us are kind of ignorant here. We're so focused on our own market, trying to progress it here, and dealing with regulations around CBD that's regulated almost state by state, right? I think we have a weird model um, where we have the individual states here regulating cannabis and cbd so it is so different across our country as a whole are you guys are over there are they regulating it by different well, municipalities or anything i am so i really like all my geography and history teachers are going to kill me because i don't know what these are called over there but by all the different regions within you know within england and everywhere else give us a little high level overview of what the cannabis landscape looks like on that side of the pond yeah, I think, I think as far as that's concerned, Todd, probably easier just to consider it at a country level. Um, and so if, you're, if your state complexity is anything to go by, the easiest thing to consider when you look at UK and Europe is to understand it from a country perspective. So um, in terms of appetite for CBD, cannabis, and pretty much, I just put it out there for now, pretty much when we talk about cannabis in the UK, we're talking about low level THC CBD. Um, obviously, there isn't any recreational cannabis legislation in the UK or across Europe, for that matter, uh, outside, of, outside of what happens in, in Holland. So for us, cannabis really is kind of the CBD market. That being said, the market is, although a few years still behind where you guys are at in the US, it's, it's rampant. Um, pent up demand across UK and Europe is forecast 
to outstrip the US market in the next three years. Um, it's forecast to be a, a multi, multi-billion dollar market by 2024. Um, UK is pretty much leading the charge in terms of when, when you look at UK and Europe as a block. Germany is not too far behind it. And then kind of tier two countries like Spain and Portugal and possibly even Greece and Sweden um, are, are following pretty closely behind. And so um, there, is, there is huge pent up demand. Um, there is still probably a lack of maturity from a customer point of view. So there's a lot of customers out there that want it, that are buying it in, it, in its ever increasing forms. Um, but there's still probably a, a, a huge education piece that needs to be done to help people understand um, how, how it can be taken, what, what forms it comes in, why you can be taking it, what it, what it can help you with. So um, as I say, we're still a few years behind where you guys are at in the States from a customer maturity perspective. But yeah, the, the, market, the market's huge um, and we're really only just getting started. It, it, it's nuts to hear that you guys are behind us because, you know, I think you look historically at culture and Europe has always been a little bit more relaxed than the, the button up United States with, with things like drinking and sex and other things. And you would think that cannabis would go hand in hand with that, right? Especially like you said, with everything in, in Holland. Why do you guys think that it's taken so long for things to relax over there. I mean, I, I don't know when you, when we look at Europe and maybe it's always a grass is greener scenario. It just seems like you guys are more comfortable with a lot more things that are seem a little bit more taboo here in the States. It, it, it does depend on the, on the, on the country. Uh, you know, Todd, you talk about kind of Holland and Amsterdam and, and they've been you know, very open-minded to cannabis for, for, for many years. I mean, you, you look at the you know, great Britain or, or the UK as an example, you know, we, we're still many, many years away from legalization of cannabis as a recreational drug. Uh, and I felt we're just being fairly, fairly prudent about the whole, the whole subject matter. I mean, Neil and I only realized the extent to which the US was, was more open to the subject by spending you know, a number of months in, in LA over the last three or four years. And that's when we really opened our eyes to the opportunity that existed and how open-minded the West Coast was towards, towards cannabis and CBD as a as, uh, as products in general, and we came back to the UK and realized over here, you know, payments processors won't touch it, banks won't touch it. We realized this is so strange, it was so anti, anti the subject matter when, to your point, the US has always been almost steps behind us in terms of development in many, in many different verticals, but actually we're, we're, we're many years behind you and being open-minded to the role cannabis can play as, as part of a kind of holistic lifestyle of individuals. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think there's a lot of people t- turning that opinion here. Um, and I think it's across the, you know, it's across the globe of people trying to become more natural, more organic and have more, you know, look, finally starting to take a look at plant medicine. You know, I look at your site and, and it doesn't seem like you guys are bef- behind us in terms of where CBD is, because the one thing I like that I see immediately is I can find almost literally exactly what I need by strength, by dosage, by price, by the type of delivery mechanism and everything else. And there's a ton of products on your site. You know, how long have you, have, how long have you guys been operating for so far? We kicked off, we went live on the site in June last year, Todd. Um, Neil and I have been working together for, for many, for many moons, for a lot of time, as I mentioned, in, in LA and, and California. And we kind of saw the, the rise of CBD and we came back to UK, built our marketplace and, and brought a lot of, US brands to, to market. So we've only been live now for, for nine months as, as a marketplace business. Uh, and already we've seen the uptick in, in demand, not only for the, for, for many different product verticals, you know, initially kind of the entry points being the oils and the tinctures, but actually more and more we see this demand for cosmetics and, and edibles and, and products that can be consumed as more of a kind of daily lifestyle rather than this kind of slightly, slightly weird way of taking drops under the tongue. And that, and that trend towards the kind of beauty and cosmetics is, is huge in the UK and has been huge. I think just building on that, Todd, I think this is where we're learning from the States. You know, I think there's a real movement now, as James said, towards beauty cosmetics. I think there's going to be female wellness, sexual wellness. They're all kind of frontier um, uh, wellness trends that are coming out of the US. And we're very much looking looking at the trends that are over it over in the states, and we're kind of thinking, okay, we'll we'll be getting that in about a year, kind of thing, as as brands start to come here. And obviously, part of what we're doing with Mellow, um, we might get onto this later on. But obviously, we've got the marketplace, but we've also got um, 
a, an e-commerce services division that we called Grow by Mello, which uh, is helping US brands come to UK and Europe. So we're building and operating e direct to consumer e-com sites for brands that want to enter those markets. And so we're looking at some of those sectors where there's high growth in the US and saying, OK, well, brand X, Y and Z, you know, we can help you come to the, come to the UK. We'll build your site for you. We've got a warehouse that you can put your stock into. We'll operate it for you. We can do all your content, your social media, all that kind of stuff. So um, we're kind of learning from what you guys are doing and then helping brands come into these new markets. That's really cool. I mean, bringing those trends from here over to Europe. I mean, it's, it's for the longest time, the trends came the, the other way across the pond. So it's good to see our influence on, on you all over there. So when I look at your site for now, are most of the companies that, that I'm seeing, are those US brands? Or are you starting to work with local brands as well? Or are you even able to produce CBD like the stuff on your site with within the United Kingdom? It, it, it's tough, Todd, you know, realistically, you know, we, we always felt that a, a brand needs to stand alone, whether it's got CB on the label or not. And the U S has produced some exceptionally credible brands that are great products, but, you know, even without CBD involved, involved in the, um, the ingredients list and the UK and, and, and probably less so in the U S we've still got quite a kind of wild west kind of cowboy side to the industry, you know, kind of the X, the X vapors kind of trying to, make a quick buck in 2000, 2016, 2017, saw an influx of people kind of the bit of gold rush into the space. There's quite a lot of, for use of a better word, kind of slop out there in, in, the, um, in, in, the, in the product space. But yeah, recently we've seen some really credible UK brands be developed um, and grow. Uh, like Otto is one in the UK. Lady A is a great brand. And, and these are first and foremost health and wellness brands with CBD in, 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 the, in the products. And I feel we're still in terms of brand development, kind of, and again, well behind the US, but we're beginning to understand, actually, we need to regulate the market. We need to have more clarity about the brand. We need to push out the, the cowboys. And that's when regulation becomes quite important because in the end, for the market to grow and for consumers to have confidence in the market, they need to, need to be buying good products and, and be given good products. And that's something which has been a bit of a, a challenge over here for, for a number of years. And, and we hope to be... A, a, at the forefront of that clarity and at the forefront of that trust and, and credibility in, in the um, in CBD space and really help consumers make a credible and educated decision about what they're taking. It's, um, it's, it's, it's difficult though because we we kind of sit um, we sit in the middle on a lot of things because we're a we're a technology company first and foremost Todd we're not, mm -hmm. we're not trying to be the kind of CBD police um, we want great brands we want great products yeah. we want to be able to educate our customers we want customers coming back to us again and again because they can they like what they see around Mellow the brand, but they also like what they're shopping from the brands that are on the site. Um, and so, you know, we 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 love to work with UK brands, but we also love to bring the kind of best best from from around the world on, onto the platform. So we are increasingly working with US and Canadian brands, and also there's some great stuff coming out of Switzerland, um, out out of Spain. So we are trying to cherry pick. To a certain extent, the kind of best of, of the rest. Um, but yeah, we also love working with UK brands. But yeah, in terms of the trends and the, the kind of sector growth, we're still very much looking at, at West Coast US um, m mostly. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny you mentioned when you say you're a technology company, right? Because it, it's interesting. I pure technology companies these days almost don't exist it's like we're a technology company because that's what we do and we have developers and everything else but because we do this we also have to do that so you guys you know with everything you're doing you're also delivering education around cbd and you're yeah, being kind of a trusted yeah. name right uh so with my job at spring big right we're a technology company we sell a marketing text messaging platform but at the end of the day i spend half my time helping people develop marketing campaigns and cadences so you know i'm almost as much of a marketing consultant as i am a technology salesperson yeah, these days yeah. but yeah, to that point you know you right, deliver sorry. a ton of what were you saying i was just going to say that to, to your point that we we are a i mean we kind of call ourselves a technology company but we're also like a content creation tool you know we've got we've got um a bit like a podcast but we've got a, a ted talk style sub brand that we called mellow talks that we just launched last week we've got an in-house chef creating um recipes for customers to and, and users to be able to put cbd in genuine proper recipes just to demonstrate to them you can you know you can use it and take it in, in yeah. all across your your kind of lifestyle it doesn't have to be as james said kind of in the mirror a bit illicitly at night um, it's a, it's a product that can be consumed in many many different ways. So 
we end no. up this kind of education business, content creation business, um, all with a goal of being able to help educate customers. It, it's funny when, when you, when you enter the cannabis space that you end up doing that and having to have, it's like, okay, this is our primary business, but to support the primary business, just because this industry is so nascent, we need B and C, whether it's content creation or, you know, the social media consulting and everything else, because most of the customers that you're working with need those services too. Right. And, and it, yeah. it's different from area to area. So it's funny, like we go back, yeah, we're a technology company, but you end up at the end of the day, you're almost a media company too, which is exactly, crazy. Yeah, right. Yeah. And what I think you guys are doing or what I can kind of, I get the feeling for me is you're kind of sparking the next level of the cannabis industry, at least on this, on the CBD side, where it's taking brands from their local area where they're becoming dominant and helping them become global brands. And what I like about that, again, the more and more that CBD can be normalized, but to your point, regulated in a way. Like it, to me, I feel like CBD needs to be regulated at the nutraceutical level, at least at this point, or like a supplement level, right? Because I think that's where we are with it and different versions and everything else, there can be arguments against it. But if what, you know, a company like yours can take an American CBD brand, or like you said, brands that are coming out of Switzerland or anything else and turn them into the global brand that represents CBD, that starts a different conversation about the globalization of cannabis. And I really like that. And from what I can tell, you know, you guys are not only, if I remember from our conversation, bringing us brands to the uk and europe but you're also bringing brands to to asia as well so um you know i if, if i'm correct me if i'm wrong here but it seems like you guys are really starting to ignite, ignite that second third fourth part of cannabis where it becomes a global commodity we think to your point Todd, we, we believe very strongly that it has a role to play in, in all societies globally um we we the, the reason kind of grow took off grow by melody the kind of uk agency model was around the fact that we've jumped through a lot of of painful um hoops over the last kind of year and a half two years in terms of marketing customer acquisition payments etc cetera, etc cetera. and we've, we've been we've been stung a few times we've learned a few lessons and now we have an ecosystem that we fully trust and leverage for our own business that we're happy to share with 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 kind of us brands looking to enter the european market and them yeah, it's, it's a quicker win and we believe that trust is is so important in this space. At the end of kind of Q4 last year, we realised that actually going further east and looking at China, the China market, and we we took a um, an investment from a a, a Hong Kong based company allows us now to build a cross border solution into China. And we have you know, flagship stores on JD and, and Tmall Global to do cross border into China for a number of key brands. We cherry pick the right brands we think are adaptable to the Chinese market. It's been a very successful, very successful model. And we kind of own, we feel we own that kind of end-to-end -end solution from a, from a UK perspective. But above and beyond that, and we, we're just rolling out Mellow now across all of Southeast Asia and, and Australia as a, as a marketplace platform. Um, we just feel that those markets may be nascent, but there's always going to be the demand to grow, to kind of grow into the CBD space. Okay, we, they may be three years behind us and we're three years behind you, but in six years time, that's going to be a, a massive, massive market. Um, and, and we just want to be part of that market as, as it develops. And we love spreading the good word and educating individuals. And in the bigger picture, is we have a very strong corporate social responsibility as a business. You know, we're very big believers in the role cannabis plays in, in individuals' lives. We're very, and again, maybe I should say so directly, we're very kind of anti-big farmer in the sense that we, we believe people need to take responsibility for their health and wellness and look for solutions that are... Uh, a stepping stone before taking the dive and being becoming becoming maybe kind of buying into the the the, the kind of pharmaceutical solutions that we think cannabis and CBD play a critical role in that. So we want to kind of spread the good word from a clearly from a, a, a commercial standpoint as, as well as a, a an educational standpoint for individuals. I mean, I was about to ask you, you know, why CBD? Why are you guys doing this? Because you know, at the end of the day, we talked about it before. Um, there's a lot of barricades when you start a CBD business, given what you guys are doing, the infrastructure behind it, and that it is based off technology. Any market could benefit from, from this, from this infrastructure, from these relationships, from the, the content creation, education. I mean, the, the regular nutraceutical market can extremely, 
benefit extremely from this. So, you know, why, why as entrepreneurs make the decision to go into cannabis and, and as much as we CBD is available more widely and everything else at the end of the day is still derived from cannabis. And like you said, there's issues with banking and there's a lot of regulations and things can happen. So, you know, you kind of touched on it, but why, why go down this path of CBD globally when you guys probably could have made a lot of money doing other things? I mean, to be honest, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question. I think there's a, there's a number of, there are a number of ways to answer that. I think, I think first and foremost, we've come across some amazingly passionate individuals in the space, you know, in the US where it's brand side, you know, manufacturer side, you know, advocates for the space. You know, people are very passionate about the subject and they're passionate because it's a, a product that works and has worked for many years for individuals. It has, it's, it's got demonstrated results, you know, for illness and, and pain and anxiety and sports recovery. And I think it's been naive for people not to believe it has a critical role to play in life today and, and into the future. I mean, secondly, we, we felt that we wanted to really play a role in, again, take a, a kind of step back from the commercial side. We wanted to play a more positive role in the UK society and European society, and maybe even global society in terms of putting this product, the right product in front of the right people. And that means kind of being a, a bit of a, a vetting, um, a vetting component of that end-to-end -end supply solution, whereby, you know, we're not saying that we are the kind of the, the gods of of uh, saying what goes and what doesn't go, but we know that what comes through Mellow, we have vetted, we've spoken to the founders, we love the products, we love their passion, their vision, their products, and we want to share that product with the world, and therefore we feel that that trust and that credibility gives us a little bit of responsibility towards the educational aspect and. We feel there aren't many industries out there where you can genuinely believe you are playing a, a positive role, having a positive impact on society. And that's why I wanted to kind of move into that space. I, I think that's why a lot of us are here. And I love hearing the passion of everybody in this industry. And I'm glad that it's permeating across, across the pond because, you know, for a while in this space here, there was a ton of people who got into CBD because they thought it was just a good business opportunity. And they learned if you're not passionate, there are a lot of different there's a lot of bullshit you have to deal with that it's not just an easy buck, right? I think a lot of people learn that the hard way between the regulation, between having to throw out whole batches of product because they're, you know, they're testing too high or just all the different things that change. I think a lot of people realize that. So, you know, if you're not passionate in this industry, you're certainly not going to succeed at all. How has the reception been? I mean, I tried to do a little bit of, of Googling before we had this call just on what the overall appetite was for CBD and cannabis over there. And it looks like that like edibles and gummies are, are starting to get more popular, which is, yeah. is kind of cool because like, I think you guys are using it in a new, like here for some reason, tinctures were, were what started yeah. CBD here. And that was very foreign to yeah. a lot of people as a delivery mechanism, right? We don't really take things in tinctures here unless, you know, you're very holistic or anything else gummies and like vitamins and capsules are a lot more familiar from a nutraceutical or a supplement standpoint. So, you know, where, where do you, I know we had talked about healthcare and beauty and that kind of stuff. And that's really exciting, but where do you guys see from like a nutraceutical standpoint, what form factors are popular? What, what is the reception for CBD? Or is there still a stigma around a little bit of a stigma around CBD there? Yeah, I think, um, I think we're, we're absolutely kind of following in your footsteps. Tinctures seem to be the kind of go-to starting point um, huh. for, for no other reason other than the fact I think that that just seems to be the first product that people kind of see or or see advertised or, um, yeah, I, it, I, it's difficult to, to kind of put your finger on why that seems to be the entry point, but it, it, it almost certainly is. Um, what we're seeing is people very quickly adopt and change, though, and, and to, to your point earlier, um, gummies, edibles, beauty, and actually drinks um, are really, really big growth categories. Um, and I think that f certainly the trends that we're seeing is that that's what people are searching for. They're still buying tinctures. They're still kind of the, the main revenue driver. Um, but people are interested. They're obviously reading more articles, um, reading more about how the industry is growing and, and trending and, and, um, and I guess changing. And so um yeah demand certainly search driven demand for edibles um uh, things like gummies capsules um as james said regulated dosage in everyday kind of um 
consumable formats um, is de de definitely the way. And as, as I mentioned earlier on, that kind of female wellness and also sexual wellness we see as two categories. You know what we're like in the UK, we're a bit kind of stiff upper lip. And I think anyone, anyone talking about um, sexual wellness tends to get frowned on in, in, in public, but actually the, that's a huge, huge growth category. Um, and so there, there are certainly two areas that, that we're looking at um, as we look to grow the categories on, on Mellow Marketplace. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, it's interesting. I'm still very curious on, on CBD and, and just really what the future of it is and what, because it seems so commoditized. Like you said, we have it in everything because there's so many different benefits. As you guys are looking for, for new products to bring into the ecosystem and everything else, what are you looking for? Are you looking for better mousetraps still? So, you know, just better quality or, or better people who are doing the stuff that's out there better? Or are you out there really looking for innovation and, and what's next and what the trends are? I know, like you said, we're, we're at healthcare, but I don't even know where would they would go from here. For a while, we saw some crazy shit like pillows and pajamas and, and stuff that did not make sense. But, yeah. you know, so when you guys meet and, and people want to get on your platform or you find stuff out in the wild, what, what exactly, you know, what type of things are yeah, you I looking think, for? I think there's got to be a, there's got to be a product market fit and there's got to be a bit of, a bit of proven pent up demand for those products our side as well. So to your point, yeah, we, we don't see anyone searching for pillows or pajamas on, on Mellow. Um, what we do see is either category driven demand or, demand for products that are solving the problem. So if you can't sleep, that, that you got a problem, right? Um, and therefore you're gonna try and look for or search for products that, that are gonna help you with that. Um, and so if we, when we see products that are solving a problem or we see products that are solving um, search queries on which we don't have any products or we have a very narrow selection, for us, that's, that they start becoming home runs for us. Um, we, we're quite caught, conscious about the products that go on to Mellow though and also James, as James was going to mention briefly earlier on the brands that go on to Mellow um, we we have quite a subject quite a detailed onboarding process for brands to go live it's not an easy hurdle to jump through and that's been done purposefully we ask a lot of questions of the brands we need copies of insurance we need copies of company owners and directors um, and, and only when we have all that will we allow the brand to be onboarded. We'll do the onboarding. So we do that heavy lifting for the brand. Um, and then from a customer trust point of view, we also have a piece of software running in the background that is a business verification tool. And that allows us to have the knowledge that the businesses that are operating these brands on Mellow are um, trustworthy from a business point of view. So are they paying their taxes? Are their directors overexposed in directorships and other companies? And therefore this company might go insolvent. So We've got a pretty big dashboard in the back end that's looking at all the brands on Mellow. And we're doing that to try and say to all our customers, bar none, we're the most trustworthy CBD platform out there. Um, so when you come to us, you're guaranteed you've got trustworthy brands that are giving you trustworthy products. Um, so that was a bit of a long-winded answer, but we, we want, obviously want products that have a, a fit. We want products that are fulfilling search criteria and search data on the site. And we want brands that are being the best brand that they can be, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, it makes a ton of sense. Honestly, you guys do as much, if not more due diligence than an investment firm would, right? I mean, yeah. you know, at this point, you might, you might as well just say, okay, you are welcome to sell on the Mellow site and we'll give you 100,000 for 20% equity in the company, <laughs> um, unless Mark or, or, or somebody else wants to make a deal, right? So, I mean, but honestly, with, with the amount of due diligence that you put into that process, you guys are going as far as somebody who would be writing a check to support that company. So I'm very happy that, that outside of this country and somewhere else in the world, that there is a company like you that is willing to go the extra mile to make sure that the products that people get are of the best quality because- in general, and now as we permeate throughout the world, CBD is the first impression for cannabis for a lot of people and mm. having them have a bad experience is, is just bad for the industry as a whole. You know, we talk about here, you know, in New York, where you go to any corner bodega and they had something that said CBD and it was usually about 49% garbage and maybe 50% CBD. I'm sure London's a big city too. I'm sure it's not too different, you know, on, on London, unless you guys regulate it better than we do. And I'm glad that a lot of that's been wiped out, or at least there are sources here. And now I'm glad to know there's one there that are like, no, we, we go the extra mile. If you're buying it from us, you're going to have 
the best possible experience. Some people might still have a bad experience with cannabis in general. We understand that, but you will have the best possible experience. And that, you know, that makes me happy to see people that are doing that. So you guys have, have launched, you launched in June of last year. Things seem to be going well. The, the site looks great. I love the ability to search and everything else. You have this platform now to help launch new brands into your ecosystem. What's, what's next? What are we looking to see from, from Mellow this year? You know, how are you guys moving forward and, and what are the goals? Yeah, good question, Todd. So um, I think two key goals. Um, you know, we have 10, 10 brands we're building the sites for and launching to the UK across Europe. Um, and we've got, you know, another 10 who are lined up to, to join that ecosystem. I think that's a really key component because it helps us kind of just kind of reaffirm our position in, in the UK and European market. I think it's for us to launch Mellow, Mellow Asia. Um, so we'll be in a marketplace across Thailand, Vietnam, um, Korea, and, and Japan, uh, which is a really exciting project. Australia. It's to continue to scale um, in the China market. And again, I think there's a two, there's a two prong role to play there to Todd. So yeah, first and foremost, we kind of cherry pick brands we think will be successful. Secondly, we're just kind of structuring our own VC, to invest in brands we think could be successful in that market. So almost coming back to your point just then was, you know, how do we take a vested interest in their success? So it's um, structuring that to allow us to, you know, to choose the kind of top 10 or 15 brands and support their growth, but be, be part of that journey and, and hopefully part, part of that successful plan. Um, and then we're launching Mellow in Australia in, in, in two months time. So and we think that'd be a great little market, a great little market over there in terms of, kind of linguistically and, 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 and culturally speaking. And then LATAMs, in Q1 2022. So it's um, from a kind of commercial standpoint, that, 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 that's our plan. I think from a business standpoint, we're just kind of commute, finalizing our kind of mission and value as a business uh, and the role we want to play from a, a, a social perspective. So outside the kind of commercial drive of the business, Neil and I want to be more involved from a, a um, humanitarian perspective. Right? And we're looking to invest in a number of global charities where we see CBD playing a predominant role in supporting and helping individuals in, in certain certain demographics. And we feel that, you know, as much as we're successful commercially, it's really about what we can give back to society and the role we can play in, in educating society. So that's a kind of key key driver for, for us. Um, but overall, it's about really meeting and talking to and interacting with a, a global ecosystem of really exciting, incredible individuals. You know, we've had a an amazing couple of years in the space and we'll continue to do so. The travel has been a bit of a shame. We used to love coming over to the US and having a bit of, a bit of banter in the US with, um, with with people over there, but we'll be back soon. Um, I always like to meet great people. We love to meet and talk to people and, you know, and, and chat and catch up and try, kind of try and connect dots in, in some way, shape or form. And um, and those kind of networks, those relationships are, are critical to our business. But I think fundamentally it's about how we can, can grow and spread spread the good word and on a, on a global global stage very cool man well how uh so for the brands watching the show and, and the people that are going to continue to watch it how can they find you how can they work with you you know how can we connect them to the rest of the world yeah so i mean we're contactable we are neil and james and our we're on neil at mellow.store and james is the same so james at mellow.store uh, our web address is just mellow.store um, so if you're on a list on the marketplace, just get in contact with us. We can put you in touch with the team and they can help you do that. That's a pretty simple process. Um, for any brands that want to come to the UK, uh, so we work with the likes of Columbia Care. We're building their UK site over in over in, in UK and Europe. So we've got brands like that that we're helping to enter the UK market. So for any brands that want to enter the market, um, we can do that as well through our Grow um, e-commerce services brand. Um, and then for any brands that want to go to China, obviously that, that's, a, that's a different conversation to have. Some brands want to do all three, which is fantastic. We put them on the marketplace. We're, we're standing up direct to consumer sites and they also want to open up the Asian market. So yeah, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Um, and, you know, I think just, just to maybe underline some of what James said, you know, the stories we hear from people in the industry just kind of make you realize this is a great sector to be in. And although we've all got a great journey still to go on, um, it, it, it's, it's fantastic. As I said, we had our first Mellow talk that we did the other day. Some fantastic brands from the US we had on. We had Lofa from Zone In and we had Lindsay from Arkham Edge. Um, and Lofa sat there as an ex-NFL player and said, CBD changed my life. And, you know, when you hear that, 
from someone that's been performing at elite level sport. Um, I think it really just makes you realise actually that I think we're all, we're all in a fantastic sector and we can all obviously learn from each other, but it's, it's fantastic just hearing, hearing these stories from people as well. All right, cool guys. Well, I look forward to when things start to open back up, hopefully the end of this year, get you guys back over here, hang out at some conferences, just kind of continue to shoot the shit. I enjoy this. Come to London, Todd. We'll take you to the pub. Oh, I, I will get it. Trust me. I will get over there. We'll go to the pub. We're going to go see some football. I, I want the whole experience. You're always welcome, Todd. Or anytime, anytime, anytime. If, if, if you want the whole experience, Todd, that means you've got to drink tea, warm beer, and we've got to go and watch some cricket. I don't know about the I'm good with all of that except the warm beer. Come on, guys. It's so I live in Florida though. It's like 95 degrees. We can't drink any of the warm beer. So. <laughs> I mean, right. we, we love to we love to come and visit you, Todd, over there. We will be over as soon as we can. Um we, we love we love transatlantic. Unfortunately, Norwegian's gone gone bankrupt. We used to fly in Norwegian, it was bloody cheap and cheerful. But um that's fine another way to get there. But um, yeah, we, we love it. We always have a few funny games over in the US. Absolutely. Well, we'll definitely do this again, gentlemen, as you expand. I've got a few people I think I might send your way, but folks, thank you, gentlemen, and thank you, everybody at home, for tuning in. It's been another edition of Elevate Your Grind. It is this Friday afternoon. I know you're at work. You're probably working from home. Hey, you have my, perdition, my permission to be on London time. Take the rest of the day off. Go enjoy yourself, folks, and we'll see you right here next week. Facebook.com slash counter business group. Of course, if you missed any part of this show, you can catch on our YouTube next week at youtube.com slash elevate your grind. Have a good weekend.